So today we are going to do some open air preaching for the glory of God, and we're expecting some uh, big things to happen today. How are you? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a nice day today, and I thought I was going to bring myself a chair, stand on top of it, and starting to make a fool of myself. Well, uh, first of all, I want to tell you that I want a little bit sitting up here, nor am I trying to promote myself to enter into the Canadian Idol. I'm actually a student. Uh, I belong to a school here down the street. I have a question to ask you. What is the most important thing to you right now? As you're walking around, what is the most important thing to you right now? And some of you may say that, well, I have my career. I need to make some money. Money. That is something that is very important to you right now, maybe. Or maybe you are in school. And maybe your school, your grade is something that is most important to you right now. Or maybe you say, the most important thing to me right now is to find where the toilet is. In that case, it is inside there and you have to go down one level and you find the toilet down there. But if I ask you another question though. For what? What is the most important thing to you before you die? Your answers will change. Each one of us, when we are being asked, what is the most important thing to you before you die, you have a different answer. People start to say family, maybe some people have relatives or people that they love that they need to reconcile before they die. But so what makes this priority shift? If you are going to die, you'll find that you need to do something else rather than what you're doing right now. Maybe some of you will say, well, if I have to worry about dying all the time, it can start to dry up life from me. Well, I have a story to tell you. I have a friend called Ivan. Three years ago, he had a cousin visiting him. And at night, they went up for a drive. So my friend Ivan has a left foot. He likes to punch it and he likes to go fast. He came into a church. The car lost control. And he had a tree. He died at the age of 23. I'll bet you that one second before he hit that tree, the priorities changed. The opinion changed, and the most important thing to him changed. One minute before you die, and one second before you die, you'll find your priorities change. One thing is sure, that the people that die today don't know that they're gonna die yesterday. And the people that are going to die tomorrow don't know that they're going to die today. You might be actually walking on the street right now. All of us have to face death. Every 24 hours, 148,000 people die on this world. Every 24 hours, 148,000 people die. Each one of us has a destiny, an appointment with death. Now what is on the other side? What happened to you when you die? There are many people who have many different kind of opinion. Perhaps you believe in reincarnations. Perhaps you believe that there's nothing out there. Now let me ask you something. If you believe in reincarnations, there are more people here on this world right now than there were a hundred years ago. How did, how did those people come from? Where did those people come from? Try explaining that. And if you believe that there is nothing after that, if you believe in atheism, let me ask you something. See the building which you're going to very easy to send over here. How did it come by? It doesn't come by accident. Somebody built it. Somebody built it there. If, even if you don't see it built, the proof that something is there, it really proves that somebody built it. And the proof that the trees are there, the birds are here, the proof that there's a creator God. 
God. The Bible says it is appointed unto men to die once and after that to the judgment. Now, some of you may say, there you go. Somebody bring up the Bible. I want to assure you that I'm not going to take So what about the Bible? Ladies and gentlemen, I think the Bible is true, or it is not. If the Bible is not true, you can go on your life today, you don't have to worry about your life. You can have fun right now, but if the Bible is true, what I'm going to say to you, what I'm going to share with you, is something very important. When we die, each one of us has to face before a holy God. And when that God judge us, He will judge us according to His righteousness. That righteousness, that standard is the Ten Commandments. I would like to ask yourself, imagine yourself when you have to face before Holy God. Have you ever stolen anything? If you stolen something, even a small amount, you are a thief. You stand before God as a thief. Have you ever told a lie? If you even told a small lie, God said, do not lie, and you told a lie, you are a liar. Have you ever killed anybody? At this point, some of you may say, yeah, I never killed anybody, I'm good. Well, the Bible said that if you were to hate somebody, God consider it as murder. See, God sees what's inside our hearts. God knows what you're thinking. And He consider hatred as murder. Now, the next thing is that Jesus said that whoever looked upon a woman to lust after her, God considered that as adultery. Now, that is just four of the Ten Commandments. Imagine this, if you face before a holy God and you're guilty of this, you stand before him as a liar, as a thief, as an adulterer, as a murderer. And the holy righteous God has to punish you. A holy righteous God has to punish wicked.